So today I've come pretty naked. Well, I've got clothes on, but no GoPro tripod or anything because I'm gonna do a little bit of a harder session and I really wanted to concentrate on that. But I thought I'd still bring the GoPro along and bring you along through the journey of the run. Today it's about 20 degrees in Helsinki. Hottest it's been all year so far. So I've got the heat to contend with as well. For some of you in Florida or where not, you'll be like, ah, 20 degrees, that's nothing. Quite humid though. So doing about a 20 minute warm up, three to four kilometers, and then we'll get into the session. So a few things to note for today's run. I've got the intervals set up on the watch so that they will vibrate and just take care of it. I just need to hit start. Don't need to think about anything. Don't need to measure anything. Just let the watch do the business and I have to do the running. So I've got the easy job. The watch has got the technical part of it. I've just got to push hard. So today I'm doing four by five minutes and one minute recovery. And this is the whole purpose of today is kind of being my anaerobic threshold. So that'll probably be like, I guess my 10K race pace, I think it is. The whole purpose is to let blood lactate kind of accumulate and teach and train the body to clear that blood lactate more efficiently. So we're at the upper end of the scale and uh, it's gonna be hard work. Like my legs are pretty tired to be honest, but uh, we know when to pull the plug. We're sensible runners, aren't we? Today I'm running in the Adidas, Adi Zero, Adios 5. So yeah, nothing really else to say, but I've got to get into it. You know, delaying getting into it, I think. <laughs> Don't think I'll be doing any filming during the intervals because I'm on my own, no tripod and also trying to focus on good form as well and the GoPro is going in the back pocket. Another side note is obviously we're here in Helsinki in Finland and it's very much rolling hills so that'll make it a little bit extra of a challenge. For me it's not so much going up the uphills but going down hills I'm not such a big fan of. But we all know that old saying work on your weaknesses not your strengths. God. Ah. First rep done, but I've got a terrible stitch. The running felt good, but the stitch and it's still here. So maybe I'm just trying deep breaths and walk for the first rest period. Okay, the stitch is still kind of here after rep two, but felt a lot better. But seems like this session is gonna be hindered by the, uh, the old stitch problem, but it's not an excuse. That's why I'm doing it getting my body whole used to it. I guess that's why the stitch is around because it's like, hey, what are you doing breathing so heavily? Oh, there we go. That was all I did. There we go, this is the last recovery period. One more five minute. Stitch is still here. 20 seconds. Put you away so I can breathe high up heavy. There we go, done and dusted. Felt good towards the end. That last rep was definitely the best. Stitch was subsiding and completely, it pretty much went away towards the end. Felt the flow as well. Cursing it a little bit that you start to feel good just as the session's over. But at the same time, that's the perfect thing that I need. Because if I don't start to do these sessions and start to do these kind of things, then I'm always gonna be at the level where I'm at probably quite now, like struggling with a stitch or, you know, struggling to find that pace. But that was it, the session's done, so now I'm just gonna jog home, nice three, four kilometers, take it nice and easy and move those legs. I've got a few key points which I wanna share with you, but we'll do that back at home whilst we're analyzing the data and we can talk through it all together. And I'll also do the Strava leaderboard. Thing I've started to do is now before going into my house because we have the tendency to like I don't know have so many distractions that you I don't know pick your phone up or you want to upload to Strava or have a shower drink eat all those other things as well and you tend to delay the stretching or the kind of like just getting some active movement so now what I do is I spend like 10 minutes outside my house and just like walk around in a little bit of a square and you know do some stretching do some get those muscles just like starting to cool down in the correct way rather than just like seizing up 
I don't know, that's what I do. But uh, actually, it'd be interesting. What do you do? Like after, let's say, some harder type of run, what's your kind of routine, post routine, that one hour after? You always feel like a million dollars just after having a shower. So let's take a look at the, some of the statistics from Strava. I'll just open it up here. So we did four by five minutes, just as a reminder, kind of a, like an anaerobic threshold, but obviously I think that was limited a little bit due to the fact that I had a stitch. So maybe the session didn't go as completely planned, but that is the perfect type of plan that because I'm out there trying to do it and my body is going to learn better probably next time to learn to breathe and maybe not have the stitch and we can execute the session as we wanted. But as I said, I'm not disappointed, I'm very happy. For the first five minutes, uh, it was 3.52. Then the second rep, four minutes, 11 pace average, and then 4.03, and then 4.03 once again. So as I said, I think when I did the VO2 max and lactate threshold tests at the Finnish Olympic Center, my anaerobic threshold was on pace around 3.45. So I was a little bit behind there and that's probably normal when you think about it. If I had a side stitch that was like making me slow down and trying to breathe a little bit heavier, but all, all in all, I have to be really pleased with that session, not on the point of view of uh, fitness wise, but on the point of view, you know, like where I'm at. And to get a session like that, that's a huge achievement on its own. One real good point to take away from this is that my legs felt so good during, they'd never got really much fatigue. So that's a real good sign. And after, you know, muscular wise, I was pretty good. It was just, uh, as I said, going back to that issue that kept me back a little bit. So it would have been nice to put a little bit more stress through the legs, but the medium stress was probably what, what was exactly needed. So that's enough about me and my run for that day. Let's take a look at the Strava Club from the previous week. So last week's leaderboard, here we go, Jukka Kukkanen. Again, clearing it up at the top, 200 kilometers running, 27 hours of that as well. And uh, Etienne Vlog, again, 2,916 meters. Right, so I'm gonna just sit down and relax for a little bit, do a little bit of body work, and then we'll probably do something later on also.